the problem of evil is a critique of the internal consistency of Christian theology. It assumes a Christian moral paradigm, that evil exists, and pits it against a Christian conception of the nature of God. It suggests that those things are inconsistent with each other, since God's supposed omnipotent, omniscient, omnibenevolent nature should not allow for the existence of evil. So according to the internal critique version of the problem of evil that Drew over at Genetically Modified Skeptic raises, Christianity has an internal problem within itself. It has two different elements that are in conflict with each other. On the one hand, God's perfectly loving nature leads us to expect a world that has less suffering than we observe. But on the other hand, Christianity entails a world that has a whole lot of suffering. But these two elements seem to be conflicting. They seem to be in conflict with each other. In other words, the, the concept of Christianity is kind of like that of a married bachelor. Once we understand the implications of these concepts, we can see that they involve conflicting ideas. No bachelor can be married, and then Christianity just cannot have this much evil. In this video, I want to provide my assessment of this argument because in all honesty, I've just, I've never found it persuasive. Hello, I am Cameron Bertuzzi. Welcome to Capturing Christianity. By the way, if you're new into apologetics, I want to give you a couple free resources. The first resource is a 60-page ebook I co-authored with Dr. Dustin Crummett entitled The Rationality of Christian Theism. The second free resource is a PDF containing a list of apologetics terms for beginners with definitions and explanations. Both of these resources can be found at the link in the description of this video. As I mentioned, both are 100% free and in my view, they're 100% awesome. So before we get into my assessment of the internal critique version of the problem of evil, it'll probably be helpful to take a step back and look at what's required to have a successful internal critique. So we're going to get abstract for just a second and then we'll get into the, the actual meat. So to internally critique a position or concept successfully, we need to locate two or more elements in that position or concept that are in conflict with each other. So the idea of a married bachelor, that's the example I gave earlier, it contains two of those elements. It has uh, the married and the bachelor elements. Those are in conflict with each other. No married man can be a bachelor. Moreover, there are at least two kinds, in my thought, there's at least two kinds of internal critiques. One is logical and the other is probabilistic. A logical internal critique says that a position or concept logically entails or necessitates two conflicting elements. Our married bachelor is actually a good example of this type of critique. It's not just that the idea of a married bachelor contains two conflicting elements that sort of probably conflict. The idea, rather, is that a married bachelor contains two elements that are necessarily conflicting. They necessarily conflict. On the other hand, a probabilistic internal critique says that a position or a concept contains elements that just probably conflict with each other in some way. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get into my assessment. So recall that internal critiques, both the logical and probabilistic versions, require at least two conflicting elements found within a position or concept. If we can't locate two internal conflicting elements, their critique just fails. So what I'm about to argue is that while a theologians have indeed found two conflicting elements, it hasn't been shown that both elements are internal to Christianity. I'm going to argue at least one of these elements, that's a one, at least one of these elements is external and hence that the critique is actually an external critique. It's not an internal critique. Christians and atheists can both agree that Christianity has at least one element of the internal critique. Christianity straight up entails a whole bunch of suffering. So for starters, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Jesus suffered a whole lot. Moreover, the kinds of sins that Jesus died for entails a whole lot of suffering. Moreover, moreover, the Bible itself describes thousands of instances of suffering. If Christianity is true, suffering is pretty much more or less certain. So we can all agree, at least on one element, this element is definitely internal to Christianity. Now, the second element says that God's perfectly loving nature leads us to expect a world that has less suffering than the world that we inhabit. So I want to first pause and note that I admit these two elements are in conflict with each other. That is not my issue. My issue is that this second element is not something internal to Christianity. In other words, nothing about the concept of Christianity leads us to believe 
that a perfectly loving God would want less suffering. And in fact, given the first element that we just looked at, Christianity would seem to lead us to the opposite conclusion. Now, if this seems confusing, let me just sort of explain how I'm seeing the situation. So the resources for an internal critique have to be found within the concept one is critiquing, right? To make an internal critique, you can't pull from resources outside of the concept, right? Because then you're making an external critique. And my claim is that nothing about Christianity leads us to believe that a perfectly loving God would want to create a world with less suffering. That claim is external to Christianity. You might think that you have reason to think that that claim is true, but that is not what's at stake here. What's at stake is what the concept of Christianity looks like internally, right? This is an internal critique. Here's yet another way of thinking about the situation. The claim that God would want less suffering is really a claim about what God would value most. God would see a world with less suffering as more valuable than a world with the amount of suffering in our current world. This claim, therefore, concerns what philosophers called axiology. Axiology is just the study of value. So in my view, when someone says that the Christian God wants to bring about such and such, they're actually bringing external axiological assumptions to bear on what God would value most. And what I want to point out is that those axiological assumptions are external to Christianity. They aren't found within the concept of Christianity itself. So at this point, the atheologian might object, and they might say that God's being all loving entails that he cares about the well-being of humans to a very, very high degree, okay? Hence, the critique is still completely, it's, it's all internal. So while it's true that God deeply cares about our well-being, it doesn't follow from this that God would ultimately want a world with less suffering. It could very well be the case that God deeply cares about the well-being of humans, but that the world that we inhabit is more valuable than a world with less suffering. This is actually this is precisely what various theodicies like free will and soul building attempt to show. But the, the point here is not to say that this or that theodicy makes this world more valuable. The point is that which world God would find more valuable is a matter of axiology. It's not a matter of of Christian theology. Within Christian theology, you can find the claim that God would want to create a world that is highly valuable, but that doesn't entail that God would want to create a world with less suffering. That just doesn't follow. And once we start to engage in a dialogue about which type of world is most valuable, we're no longer doing Christian theology, we're doing axiology. There's no set of scriptures that reveal the necessary and sufficient conditions for the world that is most valuable. So to reiterate, even if you think you have good reason to think that God would want to create a world with less suffering, that is not what's at stake here. What's at stake is what the concept of Christianity looks like internally. Again, this isn't an internal critique. It's supposed to be. But by my limited lights, I don't think the internal critique can be made without engaging in axiology. And God's preferring a world with less suffering is not part of the axiological entailments of Christianity. So now you might think that the external critique still needs an answer. And I completely agree. Like I, I can't stress that enough. I completely agree that it needs an answer. And my, my answer is basically that the atheist has the wrong axiological assumptions, but that is a completely separate question. The point that I want to make is that there was a reason that critique was offered as an internal critique in the first place. The internal critique version is often appealed to when the Christian says that evil proves that God exists. And so this isn't necessarily, like, I don't make this move personally, but it's a move that a lot of Christian philosophers and apologists uh, make, including Dr. William Lane Craig. Finally, the third point I wanted to make in this regard is that evil actually proves God's existence. Yes, I think there's a good argument for God from evil. It goes like this. Premise one, if God does not exist, objective moral values do not exist. Two, evil exists. Three, therefore, objective moral values exist. Some things are evil, therefore God exists. So while on a superficial level, evil might seem to call into question God's existence, on a deeper philosophical level, evil actually proves God's existence because in the absence of God, nothing 
would be good or evil as such. So the atheists that forward the internal critique say that they aren't committing themselves to premise two in Dr. Craig's argument. They don't accept the existence of objective evil. So what they're doing is they're making an internal critique of Christianity. And that was, that was Drew's argument at the beginning of the video. However, as I've just argued, the internal critique is actually an external critique because it involves the notion of axiology that is external to Christian theology. Hence, not only are these atheists failing to adequately respond to the argument from evil that Dr. Craig and other philosophers raise, they're in essence just offering a standard version of the problem of evil that's susceptible to standard theodicies and other standard theistic responses. So in my view, the internal critique version of the problem of evil should probably just be abandoned. It's not a very good argument. All right, let me know your thoughts on this video. Have I misunderstood the internal critique version of the problem of evil? Let me know in the comments. And as you know, Christianity is true. Jesus rose bodily from the dead.